Well, now to the developing story involving former President Trump as the FBI raided his Mar-a-Lago resort yesterday morning. Dozens of agents were, were seen leaving the resort after executing a search warrant related to documents Trump took to his Palm Beach estate after leaving the White House. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, an unprecedented move by the Justice Department. Former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort raided by the FBI. In a statement, Trump confirming the search, saying they even broke into my safe and claiming his home is currently under siege, raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Trump was in New York at the time, not Mar-a-Lago. He's seen here leaving Trump Tower Monday night, ignoring questions. Trump later calling into a rally for Sarah Palin, alluding to the events at Mar-a-Lago. Another day in paradise. This was a strange day. ABC News confirming the search warrant was executed at 10 a.m. Monday morning and that it was related to improperly removed documents, some classified from the White House. Overnight, Trump's closest Republican allies slamming the FBI. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy tweeting a statement saying the Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene simply tweeting, defund the FBI. And Eric Trump joining in. All of a sudden, on no notice, they sent, you know, 20 cars and, and 30 agents. Sean, I mean, this, this is just more political persecution of Donald J. Trump. Although several Republicans are criticizing the search, the head of the FBI, Christopher Wray, is himself a Republican, nominated by Trump. Former FBI agent Stuart Kaplan says we may never hear about what was on the pages of the sealed affidavit. What was alleged in the affidavit uh, bears out, meaning they retrieved that evidence. Uh, it is possible that criminal charges could be filed against the president. Sources tell ABC News there's been a strong reaction to the raid on extremists and QAnon-related forums, including those that were active before January 6th. Some have been calling for violence and even a civil war. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington.